Yeah, let me let me buy it this time. This, no, ha- man. this, this helps us too. Seriously. This, no. I will walk. I will get out. We will get this out is of my tiny donation well, to we, the cause. We will walk. We will walk back to Mike's house <laughs> just, so. to just put you. We will walk put to Mike's you. house. Row, row, row your boat 3,000 miles across the ocean. Yeah, that's what's happening this year. The guys from Guardian Initiatives are back. Jared and Mark were on Ken's Think Tank two years ago to talk about their plans to row across the entire Atlantic Ocean to raise awareness for first responder mental wellness and suicide prevention. And this is the year they go. In December 2022, their small team will fly to Africa with a specialized ocean rowboat for the start of a 3,000-mile race that will have them row non-stop from the west coast of Africa to Antigua in the Caribbean. The journey will take roughly 45 days. The only propulsion method they will have is their own rowing, and they will need to take 60 days worth of supplies with them when they embark because there are no stops, no place to rest, no place to restock, nothing but empty ocean. The annual race is called the Talisker Whiskey Atlantic Challenge and is known as the world's toughest row. You think? (laughs) I'm going to catch up with Jared and Mark to see how their preparations are coming since last we spoke and see how they feel about the monumental task that awaits them at the end of this year. Want to see how it goes? Come along for the ride in Ken's Think Tank. Ken's Think Tank is made possible by the following sponsors. Do you need HVAC services or a tankless water heater? Four States Equipment. Whether it's residential or commercial, Four States Equipment has it all. Parts and equipment, sales and service. From restaurant equipment to heating and air conditioning, visit fourstatesequipment.com. Ken Collins Marketing. It's simple. We help small business owners get more customers. Show our sponsors some love. If you're watching the video, show us some love by smashing the like button. And remember, the views and opinions expressed on Ken's Think Tank do not necessarily reflect those of our sponsors. We've got Jared and Mark once again in the same seats. Same seats. That you were in last time. Switch. So I interviewed you guys like two years ago, almost, almost exactly two years ago. Oh wow. Yeah, you guys have been busy. For the past two years, we have. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been super busy. Of course, when we talked to you our first time, we were gearing up and uh, you know had this idea of rowing across the ocean for mental wellness, and we never let that go. And yeah, so the past two years have been a, a firestorm of you know fundraising and learning about ocean rowing and getting our boat. And, um, in the middle of working and family. Right. <laughs> oh man, so you have the boat, yeah, and uh, the boat. right now it's it's getting a cover mm-hmm. put on it, so. Yep, yeah, ABC Canvas is putting a, a cover on for us, which right will, on. will help us out a bunch. Especially when we're you know bringing it to Florida and right. some of these long places, these long trips, that cover will help us. Right. Now, is there any kind of like cover for maybe storms while you're at sea or anything? You know what I mean? I know there's. I think there's like a little cabin on yeah. there, like a tiny little cabin. Yeah, there's two cabins, uh, one on each side of the boat. Okay. But there's no covers. There's no cover like on the road deck. So we'll row right. in between the two cabins on the road deck. But there's no no cover there. It's just out in the elements. So if it's storming or if you guys have third degree burns from the sun yeah. <laughs> or whatever, you just gotta suck right. it up and deal suck with it. Suck it up and just deal with it. <laughs> yeah. They wouldn't they wouldn't even let us have anything on the boat. You know, the race uh, coordinators wouldn't let you have anything on the boat because it could be like that because it could be used as a sail. Right. Oh, right. So keep, oh. remember, it's a race. We're, we're, we're t- I guess, officially competing, but right. truly we're we're working, you know, rowing to raise awareness and yeah. there to finish and finish safely. So. Yeah, absolutely. But unfortunately, it's one of those things too that I, you can't really train for that. And right. you know, how do you train for that? How do you train yourself for a 45 day suffer fest yeah. in the middle of the ocean? You know, mentally, until you're there, you can't do it. But I think what what's help, helps us 
uh, is, is two things. One, how long we've been working on this and talking about it and, you know, envisioning it in our yeah. minds. And, um, and then also knowing the cause behind it. And Jared talks a lot about that, you know, not, not giving up at all and, you know, have stay that mental strength or keep maintaining that mental strength for, uh, you know, the cause. And right. Those people who are really suffering, you know, yeah. who, who didn't really have a chance, a, a choice to put themselves in a position of, you know, rowing across an ocean, but those who are really struggling. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, because not to downgrade it, anybody who wants to compete in that thing for the sake of competing in it, that's a pretty large endeavor. But um, it's a little bit different of a thing. I guess it would help help when you're, like, you know you're doing this for a purpose. Right. There's something behind it. Then, you know, when we're out fundraising, right, where these businesses are, are generous enough to give us their money, their yeah. money, there's a sense of we got to do it. You know, yeah, you have an obligation. There's, yeah. yeah, there's an obligation to get it done. So. Um, so we won't give up on our, on our sponsors as well. Very cool. And, and so you guys are actually, you're rowing this year. Yeah. Yeah. This year we're, we're about nine months out Man. from the actual race start. Although we'll, we'll be at the race start a couple of weeks prior to that. But yeah, we're about nine months out from, from the gun going off and yeah, being out there. It's probably a little bit too far still yet, but. Um, what do you think your emotions are going to do this year as you're getting closer to the thing? Uh, you know, if, I think for me, as we get, you know, it's like every everything becomes well, everything becomes more more real, and, and yeah. so, like for instance, this week we're on a we're on a Zoom call with Atlanta Campaigns, the race organizers, and we're talking about our row. Whereas last year we were talking about somebody else's row. Right. This year we're talking about our row and. Uh, really narrowing down the safety the safety stuff and equipment and it's stuff like that that emotionally it's like i kind of get goosebumps in that zoom meeting like yeah. thinking this is us here soon yeah, you know? man. but you know yeah. as, as we get closer and we start you know go to england that's going to be a huge thing when we go to florida for our training that'll be a huge thing and as we get as we get closer it's just going to be it's just going to be crazy we have a coffee sponsor uh, oh do you yeah risen warrior coffee they're doing our coffee for the row they, we have our own blend it's called the Atlantic uh, Grind. Oh, nice! Yeah. So. Oh my God. Pun intended, right? Atlantic, Atlantic <laughs> Grind. Grind, right. the grind. It'll be across yeah. the Atlantic. So. Oh. Actually, through our through all this through the wellness stuff, we we did a podcast with a guy named Mike Van Meter. Um, he has a podcast called Recovery Is Possible, and he's okay. a uh, he's a Navy pilot, then a, um, a D Washington D.C. cop, and now, then re FBI agent. He retired as an FBI agent, oh, but nice. he, uh, he struggled with addiction and is in recovery. He's been in recovery, I think, nine or twelve years. So he has this podcast he does called Recovery Is Possible, and of course that all blends with the mental wellness side and addiction for first responders is one of that you know one of the big issues. Right. And, and getting me thinking, like, when when do you when do you stop and say? You know, I'm heading down a path that could yeah. be an issue before, but it hasn't become an issue before yet. you get yeah. to that problem. And, yeah. and that's kind of where I was. And so about a year ago, I quit drinking. I just, I haven't, right. I, I, and I, you know, it's, I like whiskey and stuff, but I, I, I quit drinking and, um, I share it with people cause it helps me stay. Like if I kept it to myself, it'd be easy <laughs> to go back. Right. Oh, definitely. So, yeah. but it was through talking to Mike and just kind of my eyes getting opened on some stuff where it was like, you know, let's, let's stop this before it affects something right you know yeah yeah it um it's important to have exposure to those things or at least have the conversations like not just a superficial conversation but a mm -hmm. deep dive conversation about mm -hmm. these issues i was telling you kind of my issues with depression and and that road that i went down that was um really deep and really dark and um you know i struggle with everybody does with with uh, some level of just man things are not just not going right mm -hmm. and then some people just yank themselves right back up out of it and all that but i start to recognize the signs of the patterns of behavior that that are my reactions to the things that are happening around me that lead me down that path and once you're on that path it's hard to get man it's hard to get yeah. off that path and so i start to recognize those things For now sure. and i bring myself back out of them um, you know, and it helps to have people around you that, that are also, yeah. you know, supportive and everything too. So, but that aren't also, I mean, we, this, this relates directly with the first responder wellness cause and, and, you know, being willing, being able to 
to make those admissions like yeah. I'm going down a road that's not good or right. you know I'm realizing triggers that put me in somewhere that you know I don't want to be that's hard for me to get out of you know that's hard and I think this is one of the stigmas around it with first responders yeah you don't want to come forward and say that because of that fear of what can happen you know in terms right of what are people gonna think of me you're um, the strong person you're yes. the protector right. um, there's an extra element of for it if you're a man because I'm mm -hmm. a man mm -hmm. and um, and how am I gonna be viewed how am I gonna view myself um, is this gonna put my job my my career in jeopardy Correct. like Correct. everything yep. yeah so there's a lot that goes with it and that's part of you know with us with the awareness and talking about it you know trying to get it out there more and more you know it's it's okay to talk about it. it's okay to realize you're gonna yeah. have these these um, these issues, you know, you may right. you may be affected, and how everybody's going to cope with it different. You know, we talk about not every, you know, the, the amount of first responders that suffer to some degree, they will go through some type of, you know, crisis. Yeah. Now, how that affects them all depends person to person. And sure. Their, their, you know, what they believe and how they cope with stuff, and their, you know, the support right. system they have, and. Um, but this, yeah, that's all direct. I mean, it, it's it's no different, right? It's from from right. a non-first responder, you know, the the veteran, the first responder. It's yeah. all the same. Yeah, it's just it's different situations leading you down the same path. Mm -hmm. I mean, the path is the same. Right. And and some people just deal with things better. You know, there are military people that have no problem whatsoever. You know, post-military people, people that've been in in uh, combat situations, they're like, yeah, that sucked, but I'm fine. Um, you know, and in other people, it's really traumatizing. And then I, I know some first responders, like the thing that always got them is when they roll up on a situation that involves a child, mm -hmm. you know, and that's like really tough huge, to process yeah. through, especially if you have your own children. And, um, um, but some other people, they just are able to process through that right. and, and realize that it's not their thing. It's a thing that they're helping out and but recognizing there still is that stigma not just with first responders but with everybody and you know so trying to bring stuff in you know to help with that confidentiality help people feel right. comfortable going especially first responders yeah um, you know we were able to uh, one of the resources and, and um, that we were able to bring in uh, with Guardian uh, and kind of share already shared with some places is called um, it's lighthouse app and they, they they build this app for first responder agencies and it's all confidential like every every officer at the agency can have access to it they actually have a public facing one now uh, but it's all confidential and right. it's nice and you know trying to get that information out you know list of counselors you can go see and, and things so and no one knows that it yeah, that no you're knows, doing that right. and yeah because while i agree it should be just you know, common talk, open talk. It should be. There's it's still but it's that, not. Yeah, there's yeah, still we're not that. there. Well, I think it's a process, and I think the more people like you guys that are like raising this issue and raising awareness of it and making it part of the conversation, I think it just starts to normalize it more, so that people aren't afraid to talk to it. You know, talk about it. No, that's, uh, we've been lucky so far. I mean, we've been able to go in. We spoke, Farmington Fire Academy asked us to come in. We went in and spoke with their cadets, you know, and if we can start that early on, that normalizing process with first responders, start it early on right. in the careers and make it, right. make yeah. it normal. You know, we, we still have a lot of people who, you know, the, the old school guys and yeah. gals, or, you know, whatever, that's just part of the job, you know, <laughs> but the, yeah. the, you know, the more, the more we can get talking about it, they'll be they'll be the uh, the minority, you know, and hopefully recognize it themselves and, right. and accept it as well. Right. Or at least they know if while they may outwardly act one way, if they realized, hey, I need help, they know it's yeah. out there and they could go to someone, you know, right. someone and talk to. Them. Yeah. Yeah, p part of that process. Keep your face on, like, yeah, I'm fine. And then secretly you're going right. to see somebody. As long as you're going to see Correct. somebody. Yeah, yeah, if that's the case, then great. Yeah. Wow. So um, have you guys you guys been raising money and and everything for the cause? We're, we're still about $30,000 away from our goal for this year. but. And so what is that? What is the, like, the non-row stuff? What are, you, what are you guys doing there? Yeah, so bringing in trainings. Like, we're able to do a training for a bunch of clinicians throughout the state about 150 clinicians 
and um, it was a Zoom at that time because of COVID, but right. we were able to do uh, training for them so they could be culturally competent on how to deal with a first responder. Okay. And so some, you know, the funds that we raised, you know, helped put that training together for us. Um, right. We've got uh, training coming up in May, um, trainings come up in, in September. Um, so, and then things like, you know, treatment should a should a first responder here locally need uh, need to go seek treatment? We want to have money set aside for that as well. Okay. But also, I guess since talking to you last, you know, we originally our awareness, training, and treatment, like both you just said, was those are our three main things. And we right. realized in there that resources, sharing resources, has been huge. We've come across so many resources that are out there. Other organizations like us are bigger yeah. or smaller that are just there to help. Um, so we were able to, last October, we went out to a, actually a treatment facility in Florida, FHE Health, and got to see their facility that has a program that specializes in just treating first responders. Oh, really? So, you know, learning okay. about that and, I mean, a very specialized clinic yeah. that, you know, we talk about cultural competence, you know, being able to come back and say, hey, this is available, you know, like you, 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 we're, we're not solely dependent on, you know, we, we do have limited resources when it comes to the competent piece here, a culturally competent piece, right? you know, in terms of treating first responders. Um, and there are benefits to, you know, a first responder who's suffering actually going for treatment and being out of, you know, out of the area, right? and, you know, where their focus can be on um, you know getting well and not you know have all these side side uh, um, distractions if you will so yeah uh, you know but bringing in resources that's uh, last October we were able to go out there see their facility learn about them and can now you know and have shared that here as a resource right um, that's that's huge and that's what like Jared said we were able to bring in that training last year to train clinicians start on that we're doing two more trainings this year and that'll have a clinician piece to them for local clinicians that we're able to guardian bring in um, either negotiate or just pay for which yeah we'll go bring in the training so that's all scheduled for May and September so kind of uh, the closer you get down through the funnel of this year the more and more focus is just gonna be on the row yeah I mean it's it's uh, we, we've noticed that it's you know thumbing through the the rule book there's so many <laughs> rules and, and right equipment regulations and procedures and all this stuff that we need to we need to accommodate and so really really just kind of immersing ourselves in, in the rule book right now and making sure that we're successful is is, uh, is super important for us this year you know, even just like the you I mean just the the life jackets right I mean that's a that was a process we trying to oh, get a really? specific life jacket that meets their requirements because of certain certain things it does or does not have is you think you're just going to go online and buy a life jacket. <laughs> right. It's not that. <laughs> turns out it's never that easy. So. Right. Yeah. Half a dozen phone calls and emails and researching. Wow. Stuff. But one fun thing we've been able to do recently, uh, we've been getting our food plans ready. Okay. And that's been uh, kind of fun, just, in, you know, one, tasting a bunch of different foods. Because you, you have know. to take all of your food with you when yes. you leave shore in Africa. Yes. Right. Yeah. And uh, 60 days worth of food we wow. will have with us. We hopefully will not need 60 days worth <laughs> right. of food, right? But, <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, we've been uh, testing our our food, our freeze-dried food and eating that. And there's a, a certain you know calorie requirement that we each have to have. And some right. of these are packed full. Like there's one that's almost got a thousand calories nice. in it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't, I couldn't, just tasting it at the house, I, I couldn't eat the whole thing, so. Yeah. But we're required to have, based on our each rower's weight, you're re there's a formula that you have to have a certain amount of calories. Right. So really per day. So right. it comes down to like five to 6,000 calories per person per day. Per day, yeah. Yeah, so you know, where we normally go to the store and try to find the low calorie stuff, now all of a sudden we're, you know, if we're bringing this, it better be calorie dense because <laughs> we got to yeah. row this weight across the ocean. While you're out there, there's going to be a, some, there'll be a way for people uh, to kind of track the progress. Um, you know, everybody back home. Yeah, yeah. As we get closer, the, the organizers will push out an app. It's called YB Races. And uh, you can you can see our, our boat literally go across the ocean. Right. So check our times and 
and our arrival dates. Because you'll time. have a locator on there yeah, that's being yeah. tracked. Okay. And then we'll have somebody, we'll have somebody on shore doing our, our social media stuff. We're able to send a certain amount of content to land that they'll be able to post for us okay. to give us. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll probably do short clips of updates when we're out there, and yeah. they'll post that for us. So there'll be there'll be a lot of information pushed out when we're when we're rowing. So right on. So the 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 row is in December. December, yep. So December and then expected to end like in January, February kind of time frame? Or? Yeah, like late February. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. No, no, not yeah. late February. But early, uh, late, late January, okay. somewhere in there. Okay. Late February, you start getting the Coast Guard out there and help them. <laughs> you know, that so it's vacation. It's sort of like a, a 45 day average run yeah you know there's some teams that have done it quicker and there's some teams that have, that have taken them longer we're just kind of basing that 45 days off of right where we feel where we're at compared to some of these other teams and of course the the ocean has a lot to a lot to say about our arrival day too um so just kind of base it off the 45 days okay and the rule book doesn't say anything about like like a trolling motor and a battery. Can't, or anything have, like can't that. have no no <laughs> none of that stuff. Okay. <laughs> Maybe like a little Ace Ventura fan right? you know, like, right. in the water. Oh wait. Um, well, um, I think it's really exciting what you guys are are getting ready to do, and and uh, and I, I think it's extremely worthwhile the the purpose behind the whole thing. So. Um, Thanks, I really man. like the idea of of, uh, of what you set up with Guardian Initiatives and 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 the goal behind what you're trying to accomplish with it. So, um, thank you. I appreciate it for for everybody, but I mean, like I said, for my own friends, you know, people I consider family. I, you know, that's that's just great stuff. Um, anything to support yeah, support you guys and and uh, and them. So. Um, oh, we, we just had the dancing with the stars yeah. thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, and the sheriff won. Yeah, he won it, man. And so he gave the money to you guys. So, yeah, it's it. It was I didn't get to go, but Mark was there. It's super cool to have the support of your boss, you know, to be able yeah. to do this. So, it's uh, yeah, I was there. He exciting. was he was he was quite the ham, and he did it. <laughs> well, I didn't realize yeah. he was so uh, <laughs> so light on his feet. Yeah. 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 So no, yeah. no, Jared's right. I mean, having support of your boss, and then for you right. know, the other first responders to know that it's it's. I mean, the boss sheriff supports this, and yeah, you know, supports the cause and understands the need. Yeah, he's been doing it long enough. He knows. I mean, you know, when your boss lines up behind you, you know you're on the right path. So right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as long as we have jobs when we get back. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I support you guys. <laughs> in all of your endeavors including finding your next job yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah come back and there's other people in our office yeah right for <laughs> <Different> name tag <laughs> uh, oh man well thanks for riding again with me and uh I'll, i wish you luck man and yeah. on uh, all the efforts just training and and getting it done and just do what you gotta do to be safe out there man. that's a long time to be on the ocean so yeah. 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 Thanks for having us. Yeah, man. Let's spread the word. All right. Thank you. Good luck. All right. Thanks, Ken. Ken's Think Tank is made possible with help from these fine sponsors Basin Home Health and Hospice.